Hey everybody, uh, we've got another one. Uh, this was sent to me by uh, Ape Man's Projector Company, Ape Man's Stuff Company. You know, they make like power banks and charger cables and flashlight projectors and all sorts of stuff. But uh, I guess they loved the, uh, the information about their last projector so much that they sent me another to evaluate. Um, again, I'm going to try to be as unbiased as possible, but uh, I'm pretty sure anybody that watches my channel regularly knows my opinion on these. But let's see if anything's changed in the past few months. I'm not going to hold my breath. So let's see. Uh, let's start with the packaging cardboard box. This was shipped to me from our favorite uh, terrible retail site. There's the uh, UPC. Here's some specs. It's a Model 07, native 1080p, HDMI, AV, USB, the size, blah blah blah, Shenzhen, Kiai Technology Company. Between you and me, this just that looks like just another R18, you know same as it always is uh, they do say native 1080 though that's curious uh, it's also Wi-Fi connectable and uh, if it's anything like the last one the case is probably the nicest part so let's check it out let's open her up there's the case here's the book user manual for the 07 Tensions. So it's spelled right. Package list, interfaces and buttons, quick start, input source, connection devices, connection instruction, setting, specifications, troubleshooting, warranty. There's all the stuff it comes with. There's all the attentions. They warn you that a lot of audio problems may happen because of DRM from Disney and Apple and whatnot. They don't send you batteries with the remote, which is kind of messed up. We have uh, focus, keystone, no zoom though, just focus and keystone. So it's probably another mechanical keystone thing. I got a feeling this thing's almost identical to the other one I looked at, except it probably has the Wi-Fi card. I still have the other one, so I'll grab it and we'll even compare. Let me just flip through the manual here. In case anybody for some reason needs it and they can pause and screenshot or whatever. So we'll just boop de boop through the manual. Go a couple seconds per page. For smartphone, you can like tether your phone to it. Or you can tie it into your home network and I guess send video over there. It'll uh, handle Andro Android file system. There we go, get my words out properly. An HDMI devices connection. So the HDMI devices. So I guess we should hurry up. Uh. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's look in the case. Like I said, the case isn't bad. There's the projector. Full disclosure, I did have it out of here already. It was in, you know, the uh, that weird bags that they put those in, those like waxy feeling bags. But there it is. It feels just like the other one. It looks a lot like the other one. Let's get you in frame there. You have a lens cap. There's the lens. And let's get the rest of our accoutrements out here. Cleaning, lens cleaning kit, pardon me, a uh, microfiber cloth and some Q-tips, or cotton swabs, an AV cable, this is actually kind of a handy cable, these are, this is used for a lot of things, so, AV cable, the remote, 
It's a really chintzy feeling remote. And then no batteries. It takes two triple A's. I'm probably not going to bother. Let's see, HDMI cable. Yep, we have an HDMI cable. It doesn't feel too chintzy. It feels fine. You know, it's as good as any other HDMI cable that's included with, you know, AV gear. And then our uh, super nice. Wow, they actually sent a polarized cord this time. Last time the uh, cord they sent just had two flat, straight pins on it. You know, being that this is a uh, two pin. Uh, Sony type. Sony uses these little figure eight plugs a lot. I, I can't remember the uh, the IEC number for this, but I'll look it up and I'll put it in the picture here. But Sony uses these, and one side is hot, one side is neutral, and that's what this is supposed to do so that you plug it in polarized. But this end doesn't care. So, but it's still nice to see that you know it's a little more bit of quality in the cable so that stuff's all right now let's look at the controls on the projector here we have our focus the focus just moves this lens back and forth and then the keystone definitely feels mechanical and yeah Let's see if you guys can see it. There's a, a thing moving in there. You can kind of see it in the lens. So power cord plugs in here. Signal, USB, HDMI, and whatnot plug in there. Let's, uh, let's get some power into this bad boy and see how amazing the picture is because curiously, Maybe they're learning, but there is no mention of brightness, I don't think. Let's see, troubleshooting. Oh, contact those people if you have a problem with this thing, and then don't expect a reply. But here you go. So imaging technology, LCD, light source LED, resolution, supported resolution, contrast, projection distance, and all that stuff, and there's nothing about lumens or lux output, which is curious. Probably because it's only about, you know, two, three hundred. The LED they use for powering these is not bright. It's just not bright. You know, for a flashlight, it'd probably be fine. But for a projector, no. Yeah. All right, blue light in the fan. Let's see, yes, English. All right. So there's the uh, picture. You can get that focused. See, like the other one, you can either focus the edge of the image or the center of the image. You can't focus the whole thing. Let's see if we can get our keystone. Yeah, see how the bottom... Let's see if we can get those dots to focus. No. See the uh, menu, those dots at the bottom of the menu... Don't let us focus. Oof. Let's see. D noise, rotate, reduce display. <laughs> wow. Oops. All right, so let's see here. Let me get something that we can play on this. Alright, so I have the movie running now. It's, uh, 
really hard to get focus still. That's a little better. Nope. Let's see if we can. All right. Light brightness, high. Color temp. Go with medium. Aspect ratio is fine. Sound mode, auto volume, that stuff. I don't care about that. On screen duration, five seconds. All right. Software update, power on mode. There's the software. So, this is that movie, Rockers. It's a, it's a good movie if you've never seen it, especially if you're into uh, old reggae. But it's a good test movie because I know it well. But I will say that the picture is not that great on this. I uh, kind of expected the picture to go a little better. Oh, wrong one. Let's see, can I jump to another part? Resume play, yes. Alright, so, yeah, this is not bright. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it, no. What I am going to do, though, is let me get a, uh, let me grab another file. I'm going to put a white, just a plain white background, and we're going to measure the uh, Lux output. All right, so I loaded some files. Let's go to picture. And where's the white 1080? That should be this. So that's the white screen. No, I'm going to go previous and pause. And I want to see the screen. There we are. Alright, so now it's paused. Let's give you guys a uh, better view here. I'm a little off to the side, but this gives you an idea. Let's get a Lux meter. Now this is not my fancy one from uh, from Osram, but I did compare it against my Osram one, and it was measuring the same. So let's see. Let's get our Lux first. Go to the corner. Oh, got to. Uh, to our range. All right, so I'm at times 100. Okay, maybe not. All right, so we're at like 550 lux, 600 lux. Now remember, this is just candle power. This is lux, not lumens. Let's see, we're at 820. I'm starting to go back down. So we're over 1,000, 1,100, and then we're going back down again. So we're going from about 600 lux to a max of maybe 1,150. Let's, we'll be generous. Looks like about 11. We'll just say 11. So 1100 to about 600. Just doing the math in my head. This is rough, roughly, uh, let's see, so 3, 18, 12, right there. All right, so this thing's like roughly four or 500 lux, uh, lumens rather, which. It's pretty bad, honestly. Especially with how hot the back of this thing's getting. But before we even go there, let's check some of the other colors to see what they look like. And you can see it fuzzy on the side. Like, it's not... You know, we'll just go in the center. There's black. Nothing. 
So blue, about 560 peak in the center. Green, 650 peak in the center. Color bars. Obviously the color makes a bit of a difference. And then of course the brightness is about 1100. The problem with LEDs, or single source LEDs, where you use one white LED for everything, is that the uh, components, the color components, the amount of blues and reds inside, are not the same as you would get with a short arc lamp or a multicolor source. Like the, uh, the way the phosphors are created for the LED, you just can't get as good a color representation as you can out of a multicolor source. But let me jump back to the top of this thing, which is really hot. So I've only had it on for about, I don't know, five, maybe ten minutes. See that? And I have gloves on, and boy, I can feel that. That's hot. 114F. I don't know where this thing's venting from. It's really not doing much from the back. I guess there's a little bit. Oh, you guys can't see that. About 120. Yeah, I mean, that's hot. That's not cool. Well, literally not cool. So let's turn it off. And um, let's really see what's going on on the inside let's get that unplugged and uh, I'm gonna let it cool down and I'll be right back all right so finished cooling down cooling down it's still pretty hot but let's uh, what do we need to get inside here fit almost it's got a piece of glue on it ah no uh, no so I gotta take the gotta take that insulation I put on there off See if this screwdriver oh, just just gets in there. And let's get Take that off. I hate these things. All right, so that should be all four screws. Oh, what's under here? What's that? See, there's something kind of discolored under that sticker. Let's see if. If it's a sticker on sticker situation, do we have a rebadge? Oh no, we don't. We have this thing. What is that? A little black cover that goes over that. I'll bet you that's for cleaning. I'll bet in the manual. Let's see if they talk about peeling the sticker up. Connect to MacBook, troubleshooting. No, no. Nope, no mention of it. But we found it. That's what matters. Alright, all four screws. Tiny little screws. Now that top. 
top should come off. Keyboard with really inexpensive FR4. Like they really built this as inexpensively as possible. And uh, Cujo for you. Here's our keyboard. So they use a resistor network right here to tell us to tell it what um, what button's being pressed. So depending on the button, it has a different amount of resistance. So it'll change the uh, voltage to a point, and it tells the projector what to do. So we'll leave that off in case we want to plug it back in and try it. But let's keep looking at the guts. So this is actually a slightly more significant than the first one, but incredibly similar. I see the power supply up here. Power cord just looks like it plugs in and runs wires over there. The uh, light source is down here. I can feel that heat. But I wonder why the top was getting so hot. Maybe that fan? It's a silly place to put a fan. There's really no air intake next to it. Now this one looks like it's blowing this way. Yeah. So that's blowing that way. That's meant to cool that heat sink down there for the, uh, the LED. Let's push that down. This one's fastened so we'll have to get to that. There's the panel. Or a panel. I don't know if that's the panel. It's a panel. We got another panel here. Two sets of connections. Interesting. Let's see. Let's look at this one first. What are they doing here? We have two. We have an adapter. We have some kind of adapter. Some power stuff on it. Interesting. And it goes right to the connector. So 6 1 2021, that panel was made. Just trying to see if there's anything that can confirm whether it's 1080 or not. I also wonder about what this is. Oh. <laughs> there's just like a loose board down here just kind of flopping about it's see how it's kind of crooked I bet that's the Wi-Fi so unplug that and then we have we'll start over here we have our speaker have our two fans and then we have our infrared let's unplug that and then over here infrared and then DC power enable adjust ground ground and 12 volt holding it. And then this front, there's a screw. There's 
the front. And then there's the main power supply. Let's pop that out and we'll take a look at it. I mean, the picture on this thing is just, they're, they're just not good. You can't get a good picture out of a single white LED with a single LED panel or LCD panel. You just can't. There's the power supply. This is probably one of the more useful parts in this thing. Um, this will make a good LED. It has an LED driver built in. So it's like a constant current setup because they got current monitoring right there. 0.02 or is it, maybe that's a 0.2 ohm maybe 2 ohm I don't know but it's uh, for measuring the uh, current going through the uh, going to the LED so let's set that there you can see the heat sink and then this is the uh, AC mains cable that runs over to here There's our focus lens. And then, which is kind of falling off, and we have Keystone. And like I said, it's mechanical. See that lever? There's a Fresnel lens there that that's moving, just like on the other one. see if we can get these screws out because I do want to see that panel I don't think it's I'm skeptical that it's 1080 but I shouldn't say there's no chance oh wow actually check this out <laughs> instead of actually using a connector they just shoved this IR receiver into the connector and bent a few of the legs over wow they didn't even want to solder it that's amazing. And they leave the, the uh, I guess that's the data pin in the center. They leave that up. So it's like it's kind of giving us the finger. Not that I blame it. Wow. Did they do that on the front one too? No, the front one actually has a PCB. See? I would love to be a fly on the wall during the design meetings for these. You know, how can we save money on the design? Well, instead of using a, a circuit board, let's just shove the connector or the component into the connector. Right, that's coming, getting loose, but we got a screw underneath, so let's take the, uh, take that main board off. And then we can also see what that crooked board underneath is. It's probably the Wi-Fi, looks like it. One more. Or it's like the actual brain. The chip looks like it's a, a very well provisioned chip. Okay, yeah, that's the Wi Fi board. Yeah, and it's, it wasn't even built right. Look. Look, see? It's supposed to be like this, straight. And there's supposed to be more screws in it. So hypothetically, let's say I had access to their screws. There would be a screw here. And there'd also be one here and here. And then that goes up to the board. There's the uh, Wi-Fi antenna. It's obviously two gigahertz. Let's pop that out and see what kind of chips we have here. I, I believe the Wi-Fi controller is going to be that smaller chip. Alright, so that's probably the Wi-Fi chip right there. 
because we have our antenna coming in here so that's probably the Wi-Fi itself there's the EEPROM that's a serial EEPROM holding the Wi-Fi info and then we have this uh, what's that say come on focus star SSD 203D SSD 203D so whatever that does it's probably a controller and we got some power stuff along the top here so that's what this module is for let's put that up there out of the way and now let's look at the main board let's see if this main board is any better than the other one I don't think so so let's start with the HDMI input Again, no TVS diode array. I know they're not exactly expensive, so I don't know why they don't bother with them. A TVS array would save on a lot of potential problems. Uh, under here is probably, yep, there it is. That's the actual brain. I think that's similar to the other one. And then we also have some power stuff. Yeah, HDMI goes into there. So this is a pretty straightforward, very plain device. Let's see, audio. See, the other one I seem to recall had an audio amp here. That does not. That's the audio amp on this one, that little guy. I'm pretty sure. Let's see if I can get the uh, part number. Yep. LM. No. LTK5129. And then we have some 1.8 volt regulators here. Let me get the main board from the other one and we'll compare. So I brought the whole thing over. This is the uh, the first one. There's the power supply. That's the panel. Here's the main board. Now this one has two HDMI ends instead of one, but it also has that same chip. Um, there's the audio amp for this one. Now this one actually has VGA too. But I guess with Wi-Fi you don't really need the VGA. It's just nutty. So let's see the video outputs. Interestingly the uh, video output on this, on the new one, definitely is wider. So that might actually be a real 1080 panel. The um, and the other one, the old one, the wire came off the uh, LCD. And I keep meaning to reattach it, although I don't know if I can. That pulled off. It's supposed to go back on there, so I might try. But you know, whatever. But they do. They're still similar. They're still very similar, as you can see. Just a lot of plastic inside. You know, uh, this was a 1280 by 800 panel, I think. Power supply. Similar. But not the same. Basically the same parts, but this one's a little more compact. So, anyway, let me get the uh, old one out of the way, and let's get into this one more. Alright, so I re-soldered the other thing, just so you all know. I'm going to put that one back together at some point. I'm going to try and put this one back together too, but let's keep digging in. Got that loose. Let's get this screw out. 
I wonder if the assemblers get paid by how many fasteners they save. All right, so that comes off. That's, you know, not a uncomplicated mold. You know, they put a lot of effort into these without a whole lot of reason to. More glue. Again, glue in there. I don't know why that's there still. Again, my, my guess is that maybe it's how they uh, deal with um, uh, dust. Maybe that's how they deal with it. Come on. We have a first surface mirror, and then the keystone adjustment for the Fresnel lens. Now what usually goes wrong with these is this piece of glass right here, this thing, that's the polarizer. Um, I've heard rumors of people using um, pieces out of old LCD monitors to replace those when they inevitably burn up. Uh, where's an LCD polarizer? All right, polarizer out of an 8350. And let's see what we get, if we get anything at all in these. And now we can't. So now they're in line with each other, polarized together, and now they're 90 degrees out. Basically, there's tons of little lines. Very, very thin. I don't even think we'll see them if I hold it right up to the camera. But there's so many little lines across there. So that when it's 90 degrees out from itself, or from the other one, they block all the light. So by changing that angle, you adjust the polarization. And the reason they do it in here is so that the light's a little more, uh, you know, shining the, the better way through this allegedly 1080 panel. There's the panel that would be in front of it. Let me drop that back in. These tend to go bad though, these tend to melt in the center from the uh, lamp, the LED heating them up. But there's our alleged 1080 LCD panel. Looks kind of small to me. I do wonder if this would work for an SLA printer though, I'll have to think about that. Let's see, and then that drops back in here and we have the fan, the big old DC brushless RS80 8030. So it's 80 millimeters here to here, 30 millimeters that way. Uh, there is no fan lock warning. It does have, again, glue, like sticky. It must be for catching dust. That's the only thing that makes any realistic sense to me is that the whole job of that is to catch dust. Otherwise, I can't see why you would put a bunch of tacky glue inside. Let's see, there's our first surface mirror. It's first surface because the coating's right on the front. And the way you can tell is if you touch it, there's no gap. So, just like the other one that also has a first surface mirror. Let's put the uh, panel back in. And let's see, just these two, I hope. Looks like it's basically the same LED. Heat sink is a little, well, quite different. It doesn't have the heat pipe like the other one did. Let's see, does that come out? Yeah. Alright, so this is the Fresnel lens that the light shines through. See, it shines through there into the polarizer. It's pretty cool. 
Oh. Come on, stay there. There we are. Now they have a the exhaust fan pulling air through across that heat sink, but I'd really think the right thing to do is uh, shine it the other way. There's the LED. We'll compare that to the other one. This LED looks smaller, but I think it's brighter. Let's see, CM4530. Those are probably all chips right there, whereas these chips are kind of spread out. But, yeah. Let's see how they're doing it. They have, let's see, power goes in, it's going through, then we have our thermal fuse up there, and then negative there. So it's meant to shut itself off if it overheats, and then turn itself back on once it cools down. But I have a feeling it'll cause damage to things long before that, uh, Hey. Hmm. All right, so I put it back together. The uh, boards are back in, fans are hooked up. Just make sure it comes on again. Not that I plan on using it, but uh, welcome. Yep. There we go. The hard to focus. Come on. Other way. There we go. This thing's just terrible. There we go. Oops. There we are. Now it's all focused. Oh, I knocked the ring off. This thing. Piece of junk. Anyway. There you go. This is the uh, Wi-Fi 07 projector. I wouldn't spend more than, I don't know, five, ten bucks on it. It's good for the LED. That's really about it. Um, yeah. I'm not surprised. This is what I ended up with. It gets too hot. Remember, about 120 degrees on top from the LED. So, save your money. Go on eBay. Buy a used DLP, buy a Mitsubishi, a Acer, Visonic, Vivitech. There's so many used DLP projectors that are very close to the, you know, 100 bucks or so that this thing sells for. I've seen them anywhere from 80 to 100 and something. Uh, new wholesale, these are only about 20, 25 bucks. So you're really paying a lot for something that's not remotely worth it not surprised that this is what i ended up with and i'm sure you're not surprised either so yeah if you have any uh questions about this thing stick it in the comments um i was thinking about offering it like if somebody wanted it but it's junk so i don't know i'm gonna tell you what what do you think i should do with this maybe we could I don't know, hot rod it, maybe run it until it goes, you know, like they do with the engines, you drain all the oil out and run it until it goes, maybe we could clog the fans up and run it until it overheats, something like that, maybe uh, throw an RGB LED in it, I don't know, before I do anything 
terminal to it. Uh, let me know what you guys think about what I should do with it. Um, and if you really, 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 really want it, uh, tell me why. Give me a good reason. And uh, maybe we could work something out. You know, I'm, I'm obviously not going to charge you for it, but maybe you cover shipping and I'll, you know, you can have it. But again, I really don't know if it's worth it, but that's up to you really, I guess. You know, if, uh, you know, I don't even know what to say to close this video up. So I'm just going to go with thank you for watching and have a great day.